Did you know you can use your mobile measurement partner for more than just an app attribution tool? In this video, I'll show you how to do exactly that plus more, including how to understand your user's journey from app install all the way to creating customizable and trackable links, and finally understanding your user's cohort analysis by specific events. I'll be using Apps Flyer as our tool of choice, but there are other mobile measurement partner tools out there, including Adjust and Kochava. Let's begin. So what does a mobile motion partner tool even do? It's essentially a tool for you to understand your app's attribution data from a marketer's point of view. So understanding your attribution data for specific channels to give you a better understanding of the return and investment of your various marketing campaigns throughout organic and non-organic channels. I wouldn't say it's necessarily an app analytics tool, so it's not going to give you very deep insights. What it really is going to give you is understand what specific marketing channels are giving you specific app installs or specific in-app events. It's going to give you an overview of the user's activation throughout your user's journey from app install all the way to a bottom of funnel conversion point like a, an actual purchase, for example, where they drop off in that user journey, how much it costs to acquire them and a few more things. But like I said, I would still recommend having a specific or separate analytics tool like a Mixpanel panel or Amplitude or Google Analytics 4. So more of a product analytics solution for understanding deeper insights into your app. And I think of it as your mobile measurement partner helps you understand more upper funnel metrics, whereas your product analytics tool really gets you to understand the habits of your users. So very bottom of funnel in that sense. All right, so let's talk about the user interface once you've integrated Apps Flyer. So this will obviously be done by your developers. They're gonna basically copy and paste a bunch of codes from Apps Flyer to the app and vice versa. Once you've been given access and you log in, what you'll likely see is the user interface that I'm seeing right now on screen. So let's do a quick rundown of the user interface. The first section here on the left-hand side is your dashboard section. So there's quite a few elements that we can touch on there. This is where you'll spend about 60% of your time. So the overview section, as you can see, gives you a quick snapshot of all your data by platform. You can filter by a specific date range. You can see your breakdown of your organic versus non-organic app installs, even by a marketing channel or media source point of view. And Moving on to the next subsection here is events. So as we click through that, this is where you can create a, a funnel or a flow path of your user journey by the specific events that you have. Although, like I said, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is for deep insights, but it's gonna let you understand which part of the journey is the part where users usually drop off. You can see that there's a drop off from the sign up all the way to where people log in. And the next section is the report section. So this is fairly simple. You would think this is where you analyze data, but this is actually where you can create specific custom tables or pivot tables, or if you wanna get a specific data from Apps Flyer, you can create specific tables, then export as a CSV file for deeper uh, analysis. Although I generally analyze my data using the dashboard section, which I will show you in a couple of seconds. The next section you'll see here is the experiences and deep linking section. You'll probably spend around 5% of your time here. Specifically, the most important feature will be the one link management. So this is basically where you can create specific links to better attribute your marketing campaigns and your social media posts, for example. If someone, if a user clicks on that specific link, they do a specific in-app action or event, you're able to understand which marketing channel have they come from, which campaign, all the way down to the ad level, which ad they actually clicked on. So it's pretty granular in that sense. Next section is the ROI 360. So this is a feature you'll have access to if you're the more premium tier of Apps Flyer. Now this is more for e-commerce brands. So this section, ROI 360, helps you understand your return on investment. This is highly relevant if you're an e-commerce brand. If you aren't, maybe not so useful and this basically gives you more tools to mess around with for you to understand those specific users and which channels or even which specific campaigns give you a better cost per acquisition 
in simple terms, which channels are going to give you the best ROI, giving you an insight into where you should spend your advertising spend towards. The next section is the configuration section. So this is where you'll spend maybe a good 10 or 20% of your time. So this is where you essentially integrate and find third party partners or platforms or tools, including your typical ones like Facebook ads, Google ads, or if you work uh, under affiliate marketing, a win impact. And I'll show you how to do that in a couple of seconds. And then the final section you'd want to understand is the integration section. So there's not much use here. I don't really spend a lot of time in this area, but this is where you can create specific cohorts of audiences for retargeting purposes. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say that's useful if there's not enough volume of users there to retarget, but it's good to know. This is also a section where you can export AppsFire data to an API for use in third-party tools. And uh, more specifically, it's a pull API. Pull API is when you're requesting the data manually and then you get the data when you need it. So it's a lot easier to extract. It's a lot cheaper. Whereas push API, there's a lot more complexity to it. It's a lot more expensive, but it's real-time data. You get the data as the data is being created. All right, so now let's go through the most important apps flyer features that I recommend studying or at least understanding. Let's begin with the overview section. All right, so within your dashboard, go to dashboards and click the overview subsection there. This is where I spend a lot of my time when I'm within Apps Flyer. So the way Apps Flyer works is even though you have one app, it will see them as two individual apps because the app is within two different platforms, right? So when we talk about platform, what that means, is it iOS? or is it Android or is it web? So in this case, you can see when I click on this parameter here, you can see there's two different apps, but essentially it's the same exact app. One is Android, one is iOS. And then the next parameter is understanding how do you wanna view your data? Do you wanna see it as unified where it's a combination of new users and retargeting, or do you want to see user acquisition, which is new users and retargeting separately? In this instance, you will keep it at unified for the most part. Attribution date is basically a date filter or date range filter, pretty self-explanatory. Let's say you want to see the past uh, 30 days of data, click apply. And then music media source. So when we talk about media source, this is the specific marketing channel that you're using. In web marketing, we use the term source within UTM parameters, urchin tracking modules for us to better understand where the traffic or the event conversion has come from. But within AppsFlyer, we call it a media source, but it means the same exact thing. So you can see Facebook ads, organic, website, email, so on and so forth. Campaign, same exact thing. Campaign is a type of parameter for you to understand a specific campaign from a specific media source or marketing channel. And then Geo is where you select if you're a global app, you want to dissect a specific country, you would choose the country that you want to analyze. In this case, we'll keep it as is. At the bottom of that, you'll see a very standard user interface of all your top line metrics from total app installs, non-organic to organic installs to revenue and cost. So if you're wondering what's the difference between organic and non-organic, so organic are installs that have come from your app store without any prior marketing channel being attributed to it, whereas non-organic is any channel where you essentially used a different marketing channel, usually a paid marketing channel to acquire that app install. And then we'll just skip over some of these elements. The most important aspect of the overview dashboard, I would say, is this segment here. So this is where you can see a breakdown of all your different marketing channels, or let's keep it consistent. Let's call it media sources, organic, website, email, and then these columns here, the great thing about this is that it's customizable. So if you want to add columns for specific app events, which I've done, you can see that here. So for Facebook, we gained 262 app installs. And then out of those, only 197 people have actually completed registration. And then out of those, only four to six have actually purchased. So you can start to create your own user flow path if you want to. And if you want to customize that briefly, click on the settings icon here. And if you're into creating custom columns, you can do that here in app events. You can see the different app events you your developer has deployed. And another great thing is that you can download this data as a CSV. If you want to do that, you can even share this dashboard as a link. So let's move on to the event section. So under dashboards, click on events. We talked about user flow and the user journey. So this is another 
platform you can do that where you can see it as a bar chart if you want within this section here within select in-app events you can choose up to three events if you want so just for the sake of example we want to analyze complete registration to app login all the way to app purchase within the date range of let's say last month so the great thing is that apps flyer is automatically going to choose the event that has the most triggers and in theory that's usually the more upper funnel event within the world of app marketing. So you can see there's a lot more logins and we can see a drop off here of completed registrations. And then finally, app purchase, which is a bottom of funnel conversion or event. And the great thing about this is you can see how many of these events have been triggered by specific channels, right? So we can see for login, it looks like Facebook ads has given us about four to 8% of those events, whereas website only brought in about 2%. If you want a more granular breakdown of those specific uh, app events by media source, if you just scroll down, you can see that question being answered. So you can see media sources, Facebook. These are all the in-app events that have been triggered by count. And obviously we want it as unique users. We wanna know how many of those users have actually done the action for that specific event. So let's say log in, we have 188 unique users and they've logged in 193 times. So some of those users have logged in more than twice, basically. And we can see like an average action per user, if that's an important metric for you as a marketer, good to know. And you can see all the other marketing channels or media sources if we keep scrolling down. So I think just going on a tangent real quick, when we start to see a bunch of data, it gets overwhelming. So whenever you go into uh, a dashboard where there's data, preferably prior to going to that section, already have questions you want answered. So at least when you see the data, you can start to answer your questions rather than being overwhelmed by the data that you see and get, that gets you paralyzed. And it's not a useful exercise. All right, so now let's move on to a very important theme within growth or app growth marketing is user retention. I always say that user acquisition is a job that anyone can do. And you know, if you give me advertising spend, I will acquire you users. But what I find that there is a consistent theme that I've been hearing about where it's more about the quality of users, right? Because you can acquire users for a cheaper cost per acquisition or CAC, customer acquisition cost. But if those users aren't really engaging with your app, they're not spending money, they're only lasting about a month within your app, is it really a good return on investment? And that's a theme that you have to discuss with your stakeholders, with your team. And it's a big topic. User retention, we can easily go on a tangent. But I do think that as a marketer, you want to balance understanding acquisition and user retention. And when we talk about user retention, it's really a user's lifetime value. How valuable is that user over a long period of time? And you want to actually define what is a long window of time, is it? three months? Is it six months? Is it a year? So back to user retention, as you can see, there's very similar parameters. You can filter the data from the data for. In this case, we'll stick with iOS. We'll have all the media sources available. Let's look at the past, let's say the la last month. We want to break it down by day and we want to group it by all the media source. So in this case, the event being used here is basically the app install. It's answering of the people that have installed the app on day one, how many people are retained after day five, day six, day seven. This is a very simplified snap snapshot of the data. Obviously, as you can see organic, but we can see within that day range, we've had 208 app installs, but within day seven, only 7.6% of them come back. Versus Facebook, we've received 34 app installs, but on day seven, it looks like there's slightly more retention there. So 11.76%. So you can start to see how the retention aspect of AppSplier can help you understand which marketing channels are actually giving you better users in terms of user retention. So the question is, okay, John, I want to understand user retention for a specific app event. So I want to understand what is the day 30 retention of people that have done a specific app event like a purchase, right? So let's do that by going to the cohort section just underneath the retention. I would say the cohort aspect of Aspire, it's, it's basically retention on steroids. So if we click on my reports here, we can get the data by revenue or by retention. Let's stick to retention by media source. And within this section here, session, you can start to break it down by a specific event, even an app uninstall. You can see all the different in-app events we have here. Let's just choose sessions for now. So a session is basically when someone opens the app and they're within the app under 30 minutes, just like a web session. 
and we want the users to be unique because if we use count, it will basically stack the amount of sessions, even if the user has, even if it's one user, but they've done 10 sessions in one day, that's going to start to skew our data a bit because this is user retention. This is not user engagement. Remember, so let's keep it unique users. We want real-time cohort. Let's look at a big window just for the sake of it. And again, this will be, be grouped by media source. You can change that here if you want. We're looking at the past, say the past 30 days, or let's say the whole month of October, for the sake of having a date range. All right, let's start with organic. We can see we've had 724 users have a session within October. And out of that day one, only 21% of those actually had a session. So this is a very interesting thing. If you're wondering, okay, why does it say 72, 724 users had a session, but day one, it's only 21%. So whenever we talk about user retention, day zero is usually the starting point. Day one is where we start to use as a comparison, hence this number here where it says users, this is technically day zero. This is our baseline metric or KPI, which can be confusing, but it's good to know nonetheless. So out of the 724 users on day zero, within day 10, only 5% actually have a session. So that isn't good, is it? But if we look at Facebook, also day zero, there's less volume of unique users, 187. But day 10, it looks like there's slightly more, slightly better retention. So 7.49% versus organics, 5.39%. So that's a lot of data to analyze. So like I said, whenever you're looking into data, make sure preferably you have a few questions you want answered. An example would be which channel is bringing us the best day 15 user retention, which channel is giving us the best amount of specific in alphabet or purchases which channel is giving us the most engagement? What is that engagement? So basically start to have these questions in mind so you can better analyze the data that's in front of you. All right, so next up, let's move on to experiences and deep linking, more specifically one link management. So this is where you can create specific links to better attribute your marketing campaigns or your marketing in general. So under experiences and deep linking, click on one link management, click on new link. There's quite a few options here. They're mostly self-explanatory, but in this instance, let's just click social. And then where it says select a media source name, let's click custom media source name. Remember when we talk about media source, that is asking you within the world of app marketing, what is the source or the marketing channel you want the click or the app event to be attributed to. In this case, let's say we are creating a Black Friday campaign for Facebook ads, right? Let's keep it simple. Another thing to point out is that your naming conventions for these one link links is going to be important. In general, the taxonomy of how you name your marketing campaigns to your UTM parameters is important. Remember when you start to analyze the data, you don't want fragmented data. You want to understand exactly the terms that you're using within your campaigns. So something to keep in mind. So if you were to keep it consistent, it has to be consistent with your web UTM parameters. In this case, media source, the channel will be from Facebook ads, Facebook ad. Click on next. Let's breeze through this fairly quickly. Campaign name. So this is the specific campaign from Facebook ads. So whatever you named your campaign where this link is going to be deployed on, let's say Black Friday 2023, offer 17. So there's a segment here asking you retargeting if you want it switched on, if you want to re-engage existing or past users. So this is great if you're retargeting users. But if you don't have enough volume of retarding users, it doesn't make sense. So we'll keep that switched off for now. Link branding, this is basically the link that you use is going to show the domain name that you're using for your brand. So in this case, you could leave it as is. It would be click dot your domain name. Click on next. This next bit is a social media preview. So this is basically when, whenever you're sharing a blog or a link on social media, you get a preview of the image of the link of the blog, you get a preview of the headline or the title of the blog. This is basically a variation of that within app marketing. So it's called social media preview. In this case, we'll keep it as is where it says use OG tags from desktop web URL or store, which is the app store. In this case, AppsFlyer is just is going to either scrape your website's metadata or your app store's metadata. Unless you want it to be a different preview image or tag, you would obviously click create your own preview and image or tags. In this case, we won't. So let's keep it as is. Click on next. So deep linking, what the hell is deep linking? Deep linking is basically a more complex way of saying, I want to create a link that 
where if the user clicks on that link, they go to a specific landing page within the app or a specific section of the app. And it's only really used if it's a retargeting campaign because a deep link will essentially take a user who has already installed the app to a specific page of your app or specific URI, unique resource identifier. So let's say if you have a retargeting campaign promoting a specific e-commerce item or product category, you would also create that page within the app and create a campaign within Facebook, use the one link management retargeting deep link, the user clicks on the link, or in this case, they click on the ad, the link takes them to that specific product page. Why would you ever use a deep, deep link? You would, ever, you would use a deep link if you want to reduce the friction of that specific user taking that specific offer or action within your app. So the question is, what if the user hasn't installed the app? Is there a point of having a deep link? The answer is yes, because if a user ha hasn't installed your app, but they click on that deep link, they will still automatically go to the app store anyway. So in this case, a deep link is dynamic in that sense. The great thing about a deep link or a standard one link from Apps Flyer is that it's automatically or dynamically going to change the landing or the destination depending on the device or platform they're using. So obviously if they're using an iPhone, it will automatically take them to the Apple App Store. If they're an Android, it's automatically going to take them to the Google Play Store. And if they're on desktop, you, you get to decide where you want them to land onto. And 90% of the time you want them to land on your website, maybe a different domain you want them to land onto, a specific landing page, you can do that too. So if you go back to the screen, you can see that the if they're on desktop, we're basically saying if they click on the link from a desktop, I want them to land on to whatever the URL is. In this case, I'm keeping it for this client, client's domain name or website. All right, let's click on next. And then this is a very important segment. This link is already telling you two different parameters, right? So the one link, we've already added the media source, which is Facebook ad. We've added in the campaigning, which is a Black Friday. Maybe you want to understand which specific ad or messaging from that specific Facebook campaign has actually brought in the conversion. How do we do that? All you do is click on add parameter. As you there's a couple of templates here you can use, but for the most part, you want to click custom parameter. This is basically as the equivalent of a custom UTM parameter. If you understand a web tracking or web analytics. In this case, I want to understand the ad name let's say, or add underscore name. Let's say your Facebook campaign has five different ads, right? Different messaging, different creatives. For this specific link, it's let's say ad number three. So what we'll do here is name the ad, whatever the ad or creative name is within your Facebook campaign, Black Friday ad three. And then you can get even more granular where you say, let's create another custom parameter, add underscore messaging. This would be the messaging, maybe the headline. It could be the primary text. It's completely up to you as the marketer to decide what data you want to see and understand. Maybe the messaging was 20% off one week only, right? So long story short, when a user clicks on the link, and they actually convert, this is the type of data you'll see, right? So if you look at the right-hand side, their attribution, the media source will be Facebook ad, the campaign name will be Black Friday underscore 2023, the ad name will be that, ad messaging will be that. The last section here, we won't deep dive into too much, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Enable cost per install. If you have that switched on, you can basically dictate AppSlyer the average cost per install for that specific link. In this case, it's not really going to be accurate because it can't send the data to this specific link, right? Facebook can only send data back to AppSlyer, but not the link itself. So we'll keep that toggled off for now. The other section here is customized look back window. All right, so when we talk about look back window, this is can get quite complicated very easily, but a look back window is a specific date range for a specific event where you want the attribution to fall into, right? So there's different types of look back windows. We'll keep it very simple. The first look back window is an ad impression look back window, or also known as a view through look back window. This is when someone sees the ad. The second look back window would be a click look back window. This is when someone clicks on the ad and the look back window is the date range you want the click to be attributed to. And then the final look back window would be a conversion or event look back window. So in this case, going back to AppSpire, the customized look back window is actually the click 
So if you read that, it says maximum period of time from click to install when a user can be attributed to a specific ad. Let's have that switched on. We, we want that data, right? So click toggle that on. It's gonna ask you the look back window. So I'll just deep dive into look back windows a bit more. So let's say day one, I see the Facebook ad, but I don't click on the Facebook ad. So that will be that data, which we'll call the view through impression will be sent back to AppsFire. Day two, I see the ad again. This time I click on the ad. So that will be a click look back window. So that window starts to trigger. That's day one for that specific click. But I don't install the app. Day three, I finally install the app, but I install it organically. So I don't install the app because of a Facebook ad. I actually search for the app within the Apple App Store, for example. The question is, which channel will AppsFlyer attribute the app install to? Is it the initial ad impression? Is it when I clicked on the ad? Or will it will AppsFlyer attribute it to organic? The great thing is, before I answer the question, your device ID, the advertiser ID, those type of data are being passed around from AppsFlyer to Facebook to your device as a data that's, there's a bit of a loop there. So all those data points are being transferred by all those different platforms. And to answer your question, because we've chosen a seven day look back window, what that means is on the second day I've clicked on the ad, I have seven days for Facebook ads has seven days to for that channel to be attributed for that specific app install or click, right? So because I've installed the app within that seven day window, AppsFlyer is going to say that the install actually came from Facebook ads, even though it was an organic install, right? Because it's still within that seven day window. But the question is, if I install the app after seven days after clicking on the ad, let's say day eight, I install the app, that attribution will go to an organic channel instead. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a big topic. I can do a separate video on that if you want. Let me know. Please leave a comment. All right, so that's enough about look back windows. Let's create the link. And that's pretty much the end of it. You'll be given a short URL. I wouldn't know why you'd want to use a longer URL. Maybe you want to, but let's keep it short URL. You copy that and then you use that link for your Facebook ads or your social media posts, whatever you want to use it for essentially. All right, so the last section we're gonna talk about is the configuration section. So this is where you will spend maybe a good 5% of your time, especially when you're starting out understanding your app's data. Your configuration section with AppsFlyer is where you integrate with third-party tools or partners. So it could be Facebook ad, it could be Google ads. If you work within affiliate marketing, it could be AWIN, Impact, or Commission Junction. So let's get back on the screen. Go to configuration. Under that, click on the partner mark marketplace subsection. You can see all the different platforms you can integrate with AppsFlyer. So you can type it manually here. So if I type, let's say, Meta, you can see that there's a couple of different platforms there will obviously use meta ads. And in this case, since I've already integrated the app, manage it's not going to say integrate here, but if we use a different platform, let's say meta Welkin, I don't know what this is. It's going to say set up integration instead. So again, if you go back to meta ads, which I have already integrated and I click on manage integration, as mentioned, integrating different channels to AppsFlyer is fairly easy. Assuming you have two things. One is you have admin access to both platforms. So you have add access, access to apps flyer as well as whatever the platform you're using so in this case let's say facebook ads and the second thing you need is just a bit of copy and pasting skills but i which you can easily do for de um, different purposes including copy and pasting api tokens for example or copy and pasting specific parameters which you'll see on the screen now if you can see here within the meta as integration the partner is activated switched on you'll need your facebook app id so again you can only get this from facebook your to, de for developers account specifically once you've created an app there, you're going to be given an app ID. You copy and paste that onto Apps Flyer. And again, there's a couple of parameters here you can see. You can create specific look back windows. Remember that theme again. In this case, a standard would be for Facebook, obviously seven days click through look back window, and then a standard one day view through look back window, which is equivalent to an ad impression, basically. So you want to make sure this attribution look back window is similar to your Facebook activity. So the data that you see within both platforms are going to be as similar as possible. All right. So the final section you'd want to know here within the integration 
section for Facebook ads specifically is remember that apps flyer is an API we're sending we're receiving data but we're also sending data so in this case this section here is asking you what data do you want to send back onto the third party platform or the third party integration and you can see here we want to allow Facebook to get those event postbacks. So event postbacks is basically event being sent to be events being sent back to a different platform from Apps Flyer. So event postback, we want that obviously switched on because we want Facebook to receive the data from Apps Flyer. So Apps Flyer event is the section where you can choose the events you want sent back to Facebook. So preferably you actually have all your app events mapped out here by your developer and then map to partner event this is where you can choose the terminology that you want this specific app event to be named within facebook keep in mind that facebook only gives you custom made one so it's pretty limited you can click custom here but you can't really name it which is useless this next section for users from if your user goes from different marketing channels do you want the data to be including those sources or do you want the data to be from facebook only I wouldn't know why you'd want to want it from Facebook only. So keep it to all media sources, including organic. And then finally, including this is a segment where it's going to ask you, do, do you want the data within Facebook to be showing just the values or do you want it to show the revenue as well, the value of that specific in-app event? So in this case, standard would be you want to click values and revenue, you want, right? You want Facebook to understand both those numbers. I also wouldn't know why you'd want to choose no values or no revenue. Maybe there's a privacy thing within your company. I don't know. But generally speaking, keep it to where it says values and revenue. And then that's pretty much it. Save integration and you're done. So that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Now let me ask you, what's your favorite Apps Flyer feature so far? Have you used it before? And if so, what are other ways you'd potentially use your mobile measurement partner or MMP? Leave them in the comments below. I'd love to learn from you. And again, thank you for watching the video. Till next time. Peace.